Hey everyone, welcome to day 72 of Through the Bible in One Year. In today's Bible study video, we continue our studies through the book of Joshua and we're going to be covering Joshua chapter 9, Joshua, Joshua chapter 10 and Joshua chapter, two, chapter 11. So let's basically jump into the Bible study today and just to start before we get into the scriptures, if you've got any questions as we go through the Bible study, literally just ask them below in the comment section and We'll try and get the questions answered at some point in the future if we don't answer it in the actual Bible study. All right, let's get started. So what we're going to be reading here is just a continuation of the Israelites now under Joshua repossessing ultimately the land, the, the land of the, of the Canaanites, so they can actually enter in and possess the land. So let's keep going, okay? And if you want to get any um, context again of what's actually happening, then watch just some of the immediate previous videos of the book of Joshua that we've done so you can get full context of what's, what's actually happening here. All right, chapter nine, verse one. And it came to pass when all the kings which on this side Jordan, in the hills and in the valleys and in all the coasts of the great sea of against Lebanon, the Hittite and the Amorite, the Canaanite, the Perizzite, the Hivite and the Jebusite heard that they gathered themselves together to fight with Joshua and with Israel with one accord. Now, this isn't the first time we've seen in the scriptures kings joining together. We saw this in Genesis. If you want some context on that, go back and watch our Genesis studies. Um, Genesis chapter 12, 13, 14, um, around there, okay, 10, 11, you'll get some context of kings trying to team up against God's people and what actually happened. Um, for those of you who know what happens, just giving you some more context about just the story in this wider context. Look what it says, verse 2, that they gathered themselves together to fight with Joshua and with Israel with one accord. 3. And when the inhabitants, inhabitants of Gibeon heard what Joshua had done unto Jericho and to Ai, that was the previous chapters, go watch, what the previous, watch the previous video if you want, they did work willingly and went and made as if they had been ambassadors and took old sacks upon their asses and wine bottles old and rent and bound up and old shoes and cl and clouted upon their feet and old garments upon them and all the bread of their provision was dry, mouldy. And they went to Joshua unto the camp at Gilgal and said unto him and to the men of Israel, We be come from a far country now, therefore make ye a league with us. So these are the, <laughs> the people that they're about to repossess and they're saying, put on old clothes, put, got old provisions, old food, old drink and all that kind of stuff and said, they came to Israel and said, you know what, we've come from a far country, make make an agreement with us, is what they basically want them to do. Now look what they, they say. Seven, and the men of Israel said unto the Hivites, peradventure, ye dwell among us, so perhaps ye dwell among us, and how shall we make a league with you? Eight, and they said unto Joshua, we thy servants, and Joshua said unto them, who ye, and, <laughs> and from whence came ye? So immediately, straight away, we'll just be your servants, is what they're saying. And Joshua is saying, who are you? Where did you, where did you come from? Nine. And they said unto him, from a far country, thy servants are come, because of the name of the Lord, thy God. For we have heard the fame of him, and all that he did in Egypt. Okay, so word is spreading. Go back to watch the Exodus studies that I've done. You can read about what they're actually talking about. The Lord brought them out of Egypt with a strong hand, many signs and wonders, and now they're coming to repossess, to come to enter the land they're coming into, it's supposed to live in, and the fame of what they did then is still ringing true at this particular time. Okay, 10. And all that he did to the two kings of the Amorites, that beyond Jordan, to Sihon, king of Heshbon, and to Og, king of Bashan, which are Ashtaroth. Okay, that's Exodus as well. Wherefore our elders and all the inhabitants of our country spake to us, saying, Take victuals with you for the journey, and go to meet them, and say unto them, We your servants, therefore now make ye a league with us. 12. This our bread we took hot, our provision out of our houses on the day we came forth to go unto you, but now, behold, it is dry, and it is mouldy. 13. And these bottles of wine which we, ha which we filled new, and behold, they be rent. And these our garments and our shoes are become old by reason of the very long journey. So they put in a lot of work to dis disguise themselves and really <laughs> make the Israelites believe that they'd come from a far journey. Okay? Now this is 
a really key lesson that we need to learn, okay, still to this day, seek counsel, okay, seek counsel from you, seek counsel from God, okay, prayer, pray, read, okay, don't just jump into decisions, I'll give you an example, I know someone, um, particular person, okay, was supposed to take a particular a certain job somewhere else um they had pretty much got people had, had instructed them um i think it was a dream or a vision or one thing something like that as well had been instructed had been given to them to go and take this job and because of a bit of money because of some money they decided you know what i'm going to stay in this particular job even though they wanted to leave and what happened after that was a really, really stressful situation, okay? And it's happening, I'm pretty sure you've probably got a story or two yourself. If you want to share it, share it below in the comment section if you want. Um, but there's always stories where God's told you to move at a certain time and you don't move and then things don't work out, okay? I'm going through this situation right now, I'll share one of my own, okay, just to set the pace. Um... I'm in the process, as we speak, of getting a car, okay? And God told me at a particular time, get the car. And because of lack of faith and all these different things, I didn't act. Or I did. I acted, but I didn't act as much as I was supposed to. And now we're going through just a long, drawn-out process to get the car. And ultimately, I look back and I say, you know what, God, this is why. I know this is why you told me to do it at the time. And I should have acted straight away, but there you go. Okay, there's there's always things that always hinder certain things, and it's always good to work on God's time. And um, you know, I'm thinking, oh, what's the big deal about a car? Not really. Okay, we've got a car already right now, but the big thing about this is my obedience in that situation is something that will catapult me to higher places. Okay, but again, I decided to not act at the right time and henceforth I'm going the hard way oh I'm in the hard <laughs> I'm on the hard road right now okay so whenever God's telling me to do something do it and that starts by seeking counsel prayer reading these scriptures all that kind of stuff and God will always talk to you okay so it's that simple but what did they do and the men 14 took up their victuals and asked not at the mouth of the Lord Book of Exodus, how many times did Moses went to seek God, went to seek God, went to seek God? They didn't do it. 15, and Joshua made peace with them and made a league with them to let them live. And the prince of the congregation swore unto them. And it came to pass at the end of three days after they had made a league with them that they heard that they their neighbours and they dwelt among them. And the children of Israel journeyed and came unto their cities on the third day, now their city is Gibeon and Shephira. Chif and Beeroth, and, excuse me, kerjath Jerum. And the children of Israel smote them not, because the princes of the congregation had sworn unto them by the Lord God of Israel, and all the congregation murmured against the princes. But all the princes said unto all the congregation, We have sworn unto them by the Lord God of Israel, now therefore we may not touch them. So they had to be truthful to their word. They had said, you know what, we've got to leave with you. And just like that, where God's saying, Look, I'm gonna take, I want you to go in, don't make any deals, don't mingle, wipe them out, possess the land, they fumbled, okay, just because they didn't seek counsel one time. Twenty. This we will do to them. We will even let them live, lest wrath be upon us, because of the oath which we we swear unto them. 21, and the princes said unto them, Let them live, but let them be hewers of wood and drawers of water unto all the congregation that the princes had promised them. So like they said, they'll be servants, and ultimately that's what they're going to become. 22, and Joshua called for them, and he spake unto them, saying, Wherefore have you beguiled us, saying, We very far from you, when ye dwell among us? 23, now therefore ye cursed, and there shall none of you be freed from being bondmen, and hewers of wood and drawers of water for the house of my God. 24. And they answered Joshua and said, Because it was certainly told thy servants how that the Lord thy God commanded his servants, Moses, to give you all the land, 
He sent out Moses to give you all the land and to destroy all the inhabitants of the land from before you. Therefore, we were so afraid of our lives because of you and have done this thing. So they're basically saying, look, we were scared. We knew that this land is for you to inherit. They just made this plan up, basically, so they could save their lives. Okay. And now behold. 25. We in thine hand. 25. And now behold, we in thine hand, as it seemeth good and right unto thee, do to do unto us do. So they don't even care. Look, from the moment and from the time they said, look, we are your servants, that should show you straight away that, look, they didn't care about anything. They just, they cared about their life more, more so than anything. And so did he unto them and delivered them out of the hand of the children of Israel that he slew them not. And Joshua 27 made them that they hear as a wood and draws of water for the congregation and for the altar of the Lord even unto this day in the place which he should choose. Verse 10. Now again, the book of Joshua is really synonymous, symbolic, metaphoric in regards to the book of Revelation. What happens in Revelation? We have the leader of the Israelites coming in to possess his land. What happens in the book of Revelation? We have, we're going to have the leader of the Israelites, Jesus Christ, coming in to possess the land, his land, okay, where he's going to rule. And who is he defeating? We commonly in today's vernacular dub him the Antichrist. Um, what is Antichrist? Someone who's opposed from Christ, opposite, who rejects Christ, who the scripture says will try and stand in the place of Christ and all things God, it says in Revelation. Now, look at this, which is really interesting. Clear as day. Now, it came to pass when Adonai Zedek king of Jerusalem, had heard how Joshua had taken out. So, Adonai Zedek, what does that mean? Okay. So, we have a person here called Adonai Zedek, okay, which is Lord of Righteousness. Who is the Lord of Righteousness? Okay. King of Jerusalem. Okay. Salem, peace, king of peace. Remember Melchizedek? Okay. That should even <laughs> make it even more clearer to you. Okay. So we have a, a king, a supposed king here in Jerusalem who calls himself Adonai Zedek, the Lord of Righteousness. Okay. Similar to Revelation, Antichrist. Okay. Jesus is going to come and wipe him out. Same thing is happening here in the book of Joshua, chapter 10. And had utterly destroyed it, as he had done to Jericho and her king, so he had done to Ai and her king. And how the inhabitants of Gibeon had made peace with Israel and were, and were among them. 2. That they feared greatly, because Gibeon and great city, as one of the royal cities, and because it greater than Ai and all the men thereof mighty. So imagine that. They've already gone through Egypt, Exodus. They've taken out Og, the king of Bashan, and Etau. Okay, I know. Then Gibeon surrenders. They took out Ai and Jericho in the previous Bible study video I've done. And then Gibeon just surrenders, a great city we're hearing Gide Gibeon is. So what do you think? That's scaring all the other people off because a great city like Gibeon is, has, has surrendered. Three, wherefore Adonai Zedek, king of Jerusalem, sent unto Hoham, king of Hebron, and unto Py Pyram, king of Jarmuth, and unto Japhia, king of Lachish, and unto Deba, king of Egron, saying, Come up unto me and help me that we may smite Gibeon, for it hath made peace with Joshua and with the children of Israel. Therefore the five kings of the Amorites, the king of Jerusalem, the king of Hebron, the king of Jarmuth, the king of Lachish, the king of Eglon, gathered themselves together and went up, they and all their hosts, and encamped before Gibeon and made war against it. Okay? So their strategy is Gibeon surrendered, let's go and take out Gibeon, just for <laughs> good measure. Six and the men of Gibeon sent unto Joshua to the camp of to camp to the camp. To Joshua to the camp to Gilgal saying slack not thy hand from thy servants okay and he says come up to us quickly and save us and help us for all the king of the Amorites that dwell in the mountains are gathered together against us so Joshua ascended from Gilgal he and all the people of war with him and all the mighty men of valor and the Lord said unto Joshua fear them not for I have delivered them into thine hand there shall not a man of them stand before thee Joshua therefore came unto them suddenly went out from Gilgal all night 
And the Lord discomfited them before Israel and slew them with a great slaughter at Gibeon and chased them along the way that goeth up to Beth Horon and smote them to Ezekah and unto Mekeda. And it came to pass as they fled from before Israel were in the going down to Beth Horon that the Lord cast down great stones from heaven upon them unto Ezekah and they died. More which that which died with hailstones than him the children of Israel slew with the sword. Now this is interesting for one reason as well. Okay, this is the same thing that's going to happen in Revelation. One of the things, one of the way God's going to defeat a certain group of people, He's going to rain hells, hells stones from from heaven. Okay, just to point that out. Then spake Joshua to the Lord in the day when the Lord delivered up the Amorites before the children of Israel, and He said in the sight of Israel. Son, stand thou still upon Gibeon, and thou moon in the valley of Ajalon. And the sun stood still, and the moon stayed, until the people had avenged themselves upon their enemies. Not this written in the book of Jashi. So the sun stood still in the midst of heaven, and hasted not to go down the whole day. And I'll just read this one more verse before I interject. And there was no day like that before it or after it, that the Lord hearkened unto the voice of a man, for the Lord fought for Israel. Now this is important for another reason, a number of reasons. First I'm going to say this. Joshua commanded the sun and the moon to stand in his place. Okay. He commanded the sun and the moon to stand in his place. Um, and the scripture is going out of his way to say this has never happened before and never happened after. And it's really interesting because I want to continue to show you this, 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 this significance, this, the symmetry. Um, I want you to continue to see the illusions in the sense that... Um, He had he he was given the power to control. I don't how can I put it to con I want to say the elements, okay? Um, in in similar fashion, what did Jesus do? Remember when they were um, in the boat, he was asleep in the boat, and the wind was boisterous, and he commanded the wind to cease, okay? The strong wind, the strong winds to cease, okay? It's not the same thing, but you see the similarities, the same liberty that both of them had and that's why i believe there's allusions to it which i think is really important now again another thing i want to talk about as well is um something that that comes up that some people get a bit carried away with now what verse is it verse 13 now this is really important it, not this written in the book of Jashir. So, what's the book of Jashir? Um, I I don't think it actually even matters, which is, which is I think is the correct answer because some people get carried away. Um, the book of Jashir is this, the book of Jashir is that, all that kind of stuff. All that the scripture is saying is what it just says here is written in that book as well. Okay? But it doesn't say anything, it doesn't say if you're going to read the book of Jashir, it doesn't say anything else, whatever the, what that book is. Um, and there's a host of what people think it is. Some people think it's another reference to the law because Jashim is right. Some people think it's another book. Some people have written fake books, all that kind of stuff. It's just, I think the simplest thing is what I said. The scripture says <laughs> what we just read is written in the book of Jashim. Okay, same thing. So. It's not telling you that there's anything more in there. It's just saying this is written in the book of Jashi. So just bear that in mind. You might see throughout the scripture different things mentioned um, and stuff like that. The book of Jashi, the book of the wars of the Lord, um, the book of the seer of X or and stuff like that. Just, okay, just don't get carried away because that can take you down a whole, another rabbit hole where people are now writing these books and telling you they're inspired and this is the actual book and all this kind of stuff. You don't need to get carried into that stuff, okay? So let's keep going. 15. And Joshua returned and all Israel with him unto the camp to Gilgal. 16. But these five kings fled and hid themselves in a cave at Makeda. Okay? Revelation, same thing. People hide themselves in a cave. 17. And it was told Joshua, saying, The five kings are found hid in a cave at Makeda. And Joshua said, Roll great stones upon the mouth of the cave and set men by it for to keep them. 19 and stay ye not pursue after your enemies and smite the hindmost of them suffer them not to enter into their cities for the lord your god hath delivered them into your hand 
And it came to pass when Joshua and the children of Israel had made an end of slaying them with a very great slaughter, till they were consumed, that the rest remained of them entered in, into, into fenced seas. And all the people returned to the camp to Joshua and Makeda in peace. None moved his tongue against any of the children of Israel. Then said Joshua, open the mouth of the cave and bring out those five kings unto me out of the cave. So they've handled the business, now let's deal with the real business, the, these five kings. And they did so and brought forth those five kings unto him out of the cave. The king of Jerusalem, the king of Hebron, the king of Jarmuth, the king of Lachish, the king of, e of, the king of Eglon. And it came to pass when they brought out those kings unto Joshua, that Joshua called for all the men of Israel and said unto the captains of the men of war, which went with him, Come near, put your feet upon the necks of these kings. And they came near and put their feet upon the necks of them. And Joshua said unto them, Fear not, nor be dismayed, be strong enough for good courage, for thus saith the Lord, do to all your enemies against whom you fight. Okay, put your foot on the necks. Okay, it's basically what Joshua is saying to all the enemies. It's 26. And afterward Joshua smote them and slew them and hanged them on five trees, and they were hanging upon the trees until the evening. Evening. Okay, let me read that again. And afterward Joshua smote them and slew them and hanged them on five trees, and they were hanging upon the trees until the evening. 27. And it came to pass at the time of the going down of the sun, Joshua commanded, and they took them down off the trees and cast them into the cave, wherein they had been hid, and laid great stones in the cave's mouth until this very day. And that day Joshua took Makeda and smote with the edge of the sword, and the king thereof he utterly destroyed them, them and all the souls that therein he let none remain, and he did to the king of Makeda as he did to the king of Jericho. Then Joshua passed from Makeda and all Israel with him unto Libna and fought against Libna. And the Lord delivered it also, and the king thereof into the hand of Israel, and he smote it with the edge of the sword, and all the souls that therein he let none remain in it, but did unto the king thereof as he did unto the king of Jericho. And Joshua passed from Libna and all Israel with him unto Lachish and en encamped against it and fought against it. So he's just literally going from city to city and wiping them out, wiping out the kings. Okay. Twelve thirty two. And the Lord delivered Lachish into the hand of Israel, which took it on the second day and smote it with the edge of the sword and all the souls that therein, according to all that he had done to Libna. Then Horam, king of Giza, came up to help Lachish, and Joshua smote him and his people until he had left him none remaining. So this particular king tried to come and help out and back back up Lachish, and they got wiped out as well. And that's how what's actually happening here. People are joining together, people are surrendering, <laughs> or people are trying to come and help each other. And they, each way they, they, they try and strategize, they're all getting wiped out one or another. Okay? 34 and from Lachish Joshua passed unto Eglon and all Israel with him and they encamped against it and fought against it and they took it on that day and smote it with the edge of the sword and all the souls that therein he utterly destroyed that day according to all that he had done to Lachish and Joshua went out from Eglon and all Israel with him unto Hebron and they fought against it and they took it and smote it with the edge of the sword and the king thereof and all the cities thereof and all the souls that therein he left none remaining according to all that he had done in Eglon but destroyed it utterly and all the souls that therein. And Joshua returned and all Israel with him to Deba and fought against it. And he took it and the king thereof and all the cities thereof and they smote them with the edge of the sword. And utterly destroyed all the souls that therein he left none remaining as he had done to Hebron. So, so he did to Deba and to the king thereof as he had done also to Libna and to her king. So Joshua smote all the country of the hills and of the south and of the vale and of the springs and <laughs> all their kings. He left none remaining but utterly destroyed all the, that breathed as the Lord God of Israel commanded. And Joshua smote them from Kadesh Barnea even unto Gaza, and all the country of Goshen even unto Gibeon. And all these kings and their land did Joshua take at one time, because the Lord God of Israel fought for Israel. And Joshua returned and all Israel with him unto the camp to Gilgal. So, a lot of <laughs> breath there to get through those kings. And the reason I don't mind literally breathing through these kings particularly because... Like the Bible so eloquently does, we're, we're, we're getting individual context of these particular kings that I've, I tried to, have tried to come and back up different kings and we've seen kings gather up and all that kind of stuff. The, the scriptures, probably the next Bible study video, going to give us an opportunity to give us an overarching look now at, excuse me, how many kings they wiped out, etc. in all the detail. Okay. So let's jump into... Joshua, 
11, which is the last of our Bible study video today. And let's take it home. And it came to pass when Jabin, king of Hazor, had heard that he sent to Jobab, king of Madon, and to, to the king of Shimron, and to the king of Akshaph, and to the kings that are on the north of the mountains, and of the plains south of Chinneroth, and in the valley, and in the borders of Dor on the west, the Canaanite on the east and on the west, and the Amorite, and the Hittite, and the Perizzite, and the Jebusite in the mountains, and the Hivite, and the Hermon in the land of Mizpah. And they went out, they and all their hosts with them, much people even as the sand that upon the seashore in multitude, with horses and chariots very many. So again, <laughs> we're seeing another conglomeration, a conglomerate of kings now coming together to try and fight against Israel. And when all the kings were met together, and, and when all these kings were met together, they came and pitched together at the waters of Meron to fight against Israel. And the Lord said unto Joshua, Be not afraid because of them, for tomorrow about this time will I deliver them up all slain before Israel. Thou shalt hold their horses and burn their chariots with fire. So Joshua came and all the people of war with him against them by the waters of Meron suddenly, and they fell upon them. Okay, they hit them up. Um, what a surprise. Verse 8, And the Lord delivered them into the hand of Israel, who smote them, and chased them unto great Zidon, and unto Mizroth, Mizroth of Maim, and unto the valley of Mizpah eastward. And they smote them until they left them none remaining. And Joshua did unto them as the Lord bade him. He hold their horses, and burnt their chariots with fire. And Joshua at that time turned back and took Hazor, and smote the king thereof with the sword, for Hazor before time was the head of all those kingdoms. And they smote all the souls that there and the edge of the sword out and he destroying. There was not any left to breathe and he burnt Hazel with fire. So imagine that. Gibeon, okay, surrendered, which was a great city, greater than AI. Um, then the next conglomeration of kings try and come and they get wiped out. And now this conglomerate get wiped out and um, Hazel, okay, being the head of those kingdoms gets wiped out in this wave as well. Okay. 12. And all the cities of those kings and all the kings of them did Joshua take and smote them with the edge of the sword. He utterly destroyed them as Moses the servant of the Lord commanded. But the cities that stood still in their strength, Israel burned none of them, save Hazor only did Joshua burn. I guess to show as an example, um, as just takeover, basically. So basically saying, look, we can burn this city because this is the, the chief city will take it out and everyone will know that we're in town, ultimately. And all the people, 14, and all the spoil of these cities and the cattle the children of Israel took for a prey unto themselves, but every man they smote with the edge of the sword until they had destroyed them. Neither left they any to breathe. 15, as the Lord commanded Moses his servant, so did Moses command Joshua, and so did Joshua. Okay, that link, strong link, and they're continuing through. Um, to deliver and do what God said. From God to Moses to Joshua to getting it done. He left nothing undone of all the Lord commanded Moses. So Joshua took all that land, the hills and all the south country and all the land of Goshen and the valley and the plain and the mountain of Israel and the valley of the same. From the Mount Halak that goeth up to Seir, even unto Baal, Baal Gad in the valley of Lebanon under Mount Hermon and all their kings he took and smote them and slew them. 18. Joshua made war a long time with all those kings. 19. There was not a city that made peace with the children of Israel, save the Hivites, the inhabitants of Gibeon, all they took in battle. For it was of the Lord to harden their hearts that they should come against Israel in battle, that he might destroy them utterly, that they might have no favour, but that he might destroy them as the Lord commanded Moses. And at that time came Joshua and cut off the Anakims from the mountains, from Hebron, from Deba, from Anab, and from all the mountains of Judah. And from all the mountains of Israel, Joshua destroyed them utterly with their cities. There was none of the Anakims left in the land of the children of Israel. Only in Gaza, in Gath, in Gath and in Ashdod they remained. Let me read that again, 22. Okay. There was none of the Anakims left in the land of the children of Israel. Only in Gaza, in Gath and in Ashdod they remained. Okay. Now remember that. I'll bring, bring that back up when we get there as well. 23. So Joshua took the whole land according to all that the Lord said unto Moses, and Joshua gave it for an inheritance unto Israel, according to their divisions by their tribes, and the land rested from war. May God bless his words. So 
what we've seen is the conclusion ultimately and we're going to continue obviously there's pretty much another half of the book of Joshua we're going to get to now more conclusionary um, text doctrine and we're going to see ultimately like I mentioned before from a bird's eye view so that wraps up today's Bible study video day 72 Joshua 9 10 and 11 any questions you've got any comments you want to talk about do that below the video and until next time take care and god bless thanks and take care